I'm going to give a stripped down simplified description and example of standardization just to try and describe it in its simplest possible terms that I can think of because in the lectures so far the examples have been more realistic but also more complicated and I just want to make the point that standardization itself is not a complex thing. So I'm going to start out from a blank session. I'm going to create uh, a new file. I'll make it an R markdown file called standardization simplified just to get started. Now I'm going to start by simulating some data. just so that we will be able to see, I'll call this standardization, just so that we'll be able to see how the data that we're working with was actually generated. And I'm going to use random numbers and I'd like them to be reproducible. So I'll start by setting the seed, just choosing an arbitrary number one. And I'm going to create a data frame I'll start with two variables. I'll start with one called sex and I will create 10 males that I'll indicate with the label M and 10 females, which I will annotate with F. And this rep just repeats this 10 times. So that's one variable and I'll create another variable that I'll call group and I'm going to create this the same way but I'll call these treatment and TRT and placebo but unlike sex I want to randomize the, the treatment group and so to simulate a randomized controlled trial I'm going to do this with the function sample and sample is a convenient function. It just selects from a vector randomly. So for example, if I have a vector one to 10 and I just do sample, it will return those same integers, but in random order. The same function can be used to do bootstrap samples with its replace equals true argument. Then you see that there is replacement so we can have the same observation or element from this vector selected more than once in here. There's the number 10 got selected four times. You can take a look at the help page for sample to see more of its options. Anyways, that's a start. So this, if I hit set C1, okay, what did I do wrong here? Oh, let's see. So that part looks okay. Error in data dot frame. Uh, the problem is that I have a comma here. So as soon as I got rid of that comma, then it's not looking for another argument. So if I now look at DF, I see I've got these two columns. 10 males, 10 females, and I have 10 treatments and 10 placebos that are randomly assigned to each participant. So this is a fully randomized design. It's a simple random design with the 50% probability of treatment. And it's also done so that I'm guaranteed to have 10 of the participants assigned to treatment and tend to placebo. If we wanted to make this a slightly better design, we could have also done a block design where we separately randomize males and females to treatment and placebo so that we would be sure that half of the males and half of the females were assigned to treatment and placebo. That's not guaranteed in this 
design. And if I do table DFI, I see that by chance, I did end up with a perfectly balanced design. But if I were to change the random seed table DF, ah, it still is. Let's try one more. Okay, so I'm at least getting lucky each time, but I am not guaranteed. Okay, here's a case where it ended up being unbalanced. After several tries, I ended up actually with an extremely unbalanced design where only two females were assigned to treatment and eight males were assigned to treatment. So that could be prevented by adding blocking to the design, which I don't have here, but with set seed one, I know that by chance I do end up with a balanced design. Anyways, that's besides the point of this example that goes into the realm of study design for randomized controlled trials. Here, I'm just going to do a very simple, completely randomized design. Now I'm going to add another variable here that is height. And I'll make this a random normally distributed variable with a mean of 180. That's a sort of average height in centimeters, standard deviation of 10. But then I'm going to add to that if sex is male, I add 5 centimeters and otherwise nothing. So now I have a height variable. And finally, I'm going to add a weight variable equals. I'll make that 0 0.2 times the height. And then I'll make this depend. I don't know, should I make this depend on sex? If I do that, then it would depend on sex in two ways directly from my generating function for weight and also indirectly because height depends on weight. So maybe I'll just leave this as is and I'll add an effective treatment. And this effective treatment will be will be two. So if someone is assigned to the treatment group, it removes two from their weight. And otherwise, if they're in the placebo, there's no change in their weight. So this is a simulated treatment that has the same effect for everyone. And it does not depend on whether you are male or female. So I can take a look now. I'll do, I'll put down down here, I'm just, whoops, just going to view what I've made. I've made this data frame with four columns, sex, group, weight, and height. So now I'm going to go ahead and estimate the effect of treatment using regression. And I'm going to create a model using LM. So this is a multiple linear regression. Weight is my outcome, my Y, and my predictors are going to be group. That's our predictor of interest. This is whether someone was assigned to treatment or placebo, plus height, plus sex, and data. Okay. Oh, essentially perfect fit. That's because I did not add any noise to this. So I made height perfectly predicted by height and group. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more noise to this just so that it's not perfectly predictable. And I'll run this entire chunk again. I did that with command option C. 
I'll do this again. So this is a better simulation now with some noise in the relationship between these predictors and the outcome. So here I have an estimate of the effect of treatment group. It's minus 2.65. So it's estimating that on average, people in the treatment group have a weight that is 2.65 less than those in the placebo group with a standard error of 0.38. So we simulated this with an effect of two. So that's not too far off. I think that if we went within the 95% confidence interval, we would find that the true value of two is within the 95% confidence interval this time. So this is your standard way of estimating the effect of treatment or the, the causal effect of some variable of interest. You do a multivariate regression, you take the estimate from your regression table, and that's what you report in your paper. And you use the standard error to calculate the 95% confidence interval that you report. And that is fine, but it is not as flexible as the standardization approach. So first I'm going to go ahead and repeat this. And estimate the effect of treatment using standardization. And I'm going to go ahead and reproduce this estimate that we got, but using a different approach of standardization. Now, in order to do this, there's a function called predict. Predict.lm is the predict function for the output of LM. And this is used to make predictions based on a regression object given a set of data called new data. Now, I can actually use predict on just my regression output without specifying new data. And what that is, is that is the predicted weight according to the regression model for all of the original observations that were in the regression. So that would be without new data. But this new data function allows us to make predictions for participants who are not in our data set. And that's what I'm going to use for this standardization exercise. I'm going to make two new data sets. I'll call this new data. One will be for treatment. And this is going to be a group that is just like our participants in this trial, except that everyone was treated. So this would be our predicted weights of everyone at the end of the study if everyone had received the treatment. So for half of them, this is the factual, and for half, this is the counterfactual. And I'll make another one called new data placebo. And this one Okay, so now I'm going to run these and I'll just show here new data treat. It looks just like my original data frame. All the heights, all the weights are the same because these are the same people, but I'm making predictions as if everyone had been treated. So what would the, the average weight B if everyone received treatment according to this model. Okay, so I'm going to take the mean of what I predict from this model given new data equals new data treat. So by the way, these parentheses around the whole thing are a trick for both assigning this result to a variable and showing the output. Of course, I made a mistake here. Let's see, what was my mistake? Ah, I misspelled mod and wrote 
mode, which is a function. So my predicted mean weight under the hypothetical scenario where everyone received treatment would be 33.86. And now I'm going to do this again. Call this placebo mean. Predict from my model new data equals new data placebo. And under the placebo, my predicted mean weight is 36.5. So, so this in our notation would be, i.e. the expected value of weight given treatment equals TRT. And this is the expected value of weight given treatment equals placebo. Actually, I should use the terminology in our data set. This is group. Okay, and now finally, what would the average weight be? Or sorry, what is the causal effect of treatment compared to placebo in this sample. And that is just the mean weight if everyone had received treatment minus the mean weight if everyone had received the placebo. And that difference is minus 2.65. And if I go back to here, I see that that is exactly the same estimate that we got in this regression table. So in the absence of interactions, we'll get the same estimate by these two methods. So why use standardization then instead of just taking our result from this table? Well, standardization does have some advantages. The first one is that if we had an interaction of any of these other variables with the group, then this estimate for group treatment here would not be the average treatment effect. It would only be the average treatment effect for our reference group. And for any other group, you would have to add the interaction estimate to get the expected effect for that other group. And it would not be straightforward to get the average effect for this sample overall, much less for any other sample, like for a population for that had some other mix of the covariate. So all I would have to do to see where this is different would be to change these, say, to I'm going to add all-way interactions here, and well, now I'm not seeing a significant effect of treatment on its own, but I'm seeing effects of sex, of height, and of height interacting with sex. But this estimate is now different than what we would see I can go ahead and I don't need to recreate those. Those are the same, but this will now be different. This will now be different. And the difference between them minus 2.42 is now very different than what we saw here. So that's one advantage that we're able to calculate the mean treatment effect or the mean effect of exposure in this sample, averaged over anyone in the sample. Also, if we wanted to apply it to a different population, all I would have to do is change this, let's say new data treat. If I wanted to apply it to a population that had a different proportion of males and females, I would just have to simulate that population and change this distribution or to a population with a different distribution of 
height and weight, I would just have to change those and recalculate this difference in mean treatment effects. Another nice advantage is that this approach is very amenable to bootstrap estimation of confidence intervals on this treatment effect. And I'm not going to get into that right now, but you'll have a chance to practice bootstrap simulation to estimate the confidence interval around this standardization estimate. So I hope this helps to demystify standardization a little bit and to show you that it's an alternative to reading estimates from a regression table and a more flexible alternative that can be used in more complex scenarios and for estimate of average treatment effect in different populations. Before I sign off, let me put this one other way to explain standardization that doesn't even reply, rely on data or simulation or regression or anything. Let's suppose that our treatment had an average effect of two on females and zero on males. Now, in this sample, that means that the average treatment effect would be one. And I just did that in my head by averaging the treatment effect for females and for males. Now, that is essentially what standardization is. It's taking your average treatment effect in each of those groups and just averaging them to get an overall average treatment effect. And if I wanted to then apply that to a different population that was, let's say, 75% females and 25% males, then the standardization averaging is just a weighted average. I would take the treatment effect for females of two, multiply that by 0 0.75 and add the average treatment effect for males, which is zero times 0 0.25 to get an average treatment effect of 1.5. So this is standardization simplified really down to the smallest possible example. And note that all that stuff we did with the predict function, that's just a fancier way of doing this same averaging. You could take coefficients from a table like this, calculate the estimated treatment effect for different subgroups and do a weighted average of those across all of the subgroups that exist in your sample or your population and arrive at an average treatment effect for that sample or population and it would just be an alternative way of doing the same thing.